More than 400 Palestinians have been killed during the nine-day period while the polio vaccination campaign was underway in Gaza this month. Thousands more have been injured and had to depend for their care on Gaza's healthcare system that's nearly collapsed. The Palestinian Health Ministry says it has documented more than 270 attacks on medical facilities across Gaza since the war began and says Israeli forces have killed at least 885 healthcare workers and injured more than 900. 34 out of 35 hospitals across the Strip have been damaged, along with about 131 ambulances. Well, joining us now to talk about the state of medical facilities in Gaza is Dr. Victoria Aveson. She's a surgeon volunteering with the charity group Humanity Auxilium. Uh, welcome to Al Jazeera. So, as I mentioned there, you're a volunteer surgeon. In the time that you have been there, how would you describe the injuries you and other doctors have had to deal with? Uh, you know, we've seen explosive injuries pretty much every day since I started at the beginning of September. Um, in addition to the explosive injuries, we've seen a lot of uh, wound care. Um, the problem is that when patients have an explosive injury, it's not just a one day treat it and they're better. They require oftentimes months of post-operative wound care. So there's been a lot of that management as well. Um, we talked at length uh, just before we came to you about the extraordinary pressure that hospitals and indeed hospital staff are under right now. What are you seeing and hearing in that regard? I mean, the, the staff in these hospitals are incredible. Um, they've been working nonstop for a year now. They're, they're frankly exhausted um, and they're working with really minimal resources. Um, every day that the conflict goes on, there are fewer and fewer disposables and essential medicines. Um, so they're working really with, with bare bones supplies right now. I understand a, a lack of fuel remains a, a big issue also. I gather two hospitals, at least in northern Gaza, the Kamal Adwan Hospital and the Indonesian Hospital, were facing the risk of closure precisely because they were simply running out of power. I mean, are there any contingency plans in place to make sure, for instance, critically injured, injured patients continue to get health care in those kind of scenarios? Um, I, I don't know of any contingency plan specifically in place here. I do know that fuel is a big problem at Al-Aqsa as well. There have been several times in the middle of operations that we've actually had to continue using someone's cell phone flashlight. And uh, also this major polio vaccination drive that's been underway in central Gaza, southern Gaza, and also in the north. How, are you, how much are you aware of the effectiveness of that vaccination drive, given that there were eyewitness accounts of people being targeted on the way to vaccination centers? Um, I know that there were um, there was evidence of people being targeted um, while they were trying to obtain vaccines. But despite that, the vaccine campaign has actually been a huge success. Um, they they matched the numbers that they expected, and I think you know, the WHO is really pleased with the outcome of the first campaign. Um, and they're planning a second campaign in October. So I think that's kind of a, a bright light in all of this. Uh, and of course, given that bright light there are still concerns about the spread of disease without sanitation being back to what it was before uh, the most recent conflict. I mean, what hope is there about being able to contain illnesses? You know, I, I think at this point, the idea of being able to contain illnesses is kind of a kind of a dream. I think we're just trying to make it day to day um, without functional su uh, sewage systems, without uh, clean water available to displace people. There's no way that we're going to be able to contain the outbreak of infectious diseases. OK, uh, Dr. Victoria Aveson, uh, volunteer surgeon uh, working with the charity group Humanity Auxilium. Good to speak to you and very best to you and your team there. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.